Hello up bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a eight tips you need to know if you're relatively new to Grounded or maybe you're a returning player and haven't played it in a while. The latest hot and hazy update added a whole bunch of new features to the game, upgrading your weapons and tools, upgrading your character and new ways to fight the creatures. So it will be a little bit focused on some of that and just giving you an idea what to do if you're a relatively new player to Grounded. This isn't going to be showing you how to pick up items, this is more advanced than that hopefully, but it will start off with some simple ones and then we'll expand a little bit and show you where you should be going and what you should be unlocking first. If you find it useful, leave a like. If you want to check out more Grounded content, make sure you subscribe to my second channel, Jcraft, where I'm doing a Let's Play at the moment and there will be even more Grounded guides in the future. Let's go. In Grounded you've always been able to scan natural resources to unlock new recipes, this also earned you science points, but now they've got the brain power system, this will also give you hints and clues about where you should be looking or what you should be unlocking next. Every time you scan an item it's going to increase your brain power by a certain amount and each level unlocks a whole list or tier of new weapons armour. But don't worry, you can still find individual items, the recipes for them, simply by finding the core ingredients before unlocking some of these later tiers. It's basically just a heads up for players to guide them a little bit in the early stages. The biggest benefit for me with the brand new brain power system is the additional science points that you can earn. It's a real grind unlocking certain things in this game, particularly some of the cosmetic items and maybe not as important stuff. So you need as much science points as possible, completing missions for Burgle, the NPC that you meet, as well as discovering new resources and scanning them. But each time you increase a brain power level, you will gain some science points. Science. as well as the normal science points that you get for scanning every single item. So even when you know the recipe for something, don't forget to every time try and scan every resource you come across. And don't worry too much about the tiers, as I said you can still unlock some of these items way before you unlock the brain power tier. You might have come across Burgle by now, an NPC that lives in the oak tree that pretty much will give you lots of unlocks. This is where you upgrade your milk molars. But you can also buy new recipes from him once you've unlocked the recipes via these Burgle chips. The very first one will be next to him when you first come across him and it unlocks all of this stuff but you need to pay for it in science points. I recommend that you pay the money up for a smithing station first. While the multi-story bases will give you the option to build something decent in the beginning, you don't need much more than a camp in a safe place. The smithing station however, once you've unlocked this, will give you the option to start upgrading your tools and your weapons really super quickly. This means better durability and more damage. That's going to make it so much easier taking on so many of the other creatures in the game. After that it really is a toss up between what you really want to actually unlock, but I may do a video showcasing all the different options and what they really mean. You only need quartzite and you can find that in abundance and break it open to upgrade most of your tools or weapons up to level 5. The two levels after that can only be upgraded with these globlets which you'll find and you have to craft and cook with the oven and that leads me on to my next top tip. There's lots of bugs and creatures in the game that won't be so friendly to you so the thinking is to build bases high and hopefully some of these bugs won't be able to get at you. Ants can still surprisingly steal some of your food from your chest even if you've built a couple levels above. But by and large, if you do build a high base or something on top of big areas, you will normally be safe. The only creatures in the game that relatively will come and attack you regularly are the mosquitoes. But these are only found in certain locations that I'm showing right now. So basically, build high for now. In the future, it does look like the game devs may add things like hornets and much more to combat bases kind of being just safe when they're too high. But at the moment, there's only one creature and it's in limited spaces. So if you want to feel extra safe from all the other creatures roaming around, make sure you build somewhere. But do go and check the surrounding areas. Not every high place is safe. There's often an orb weaver that literally goes up and down on his web hanging from this light fixture. So make sure you've spent a good amount of time walking around the area, seeing what kind of creatures are spawning before you choose your base location. But yeah, aim for something that's a little bit above ground, like flagstones, some of the wood, but watch out for certain places. Like this plank of wood on the ground, underneath is a spider hole, and you'll find plenty of baby spiders regularly attacking you if you build on top of it. A favourite spot for many players is some of these wooden posts that separate the pond and some of the rest of the garden. There are lots of old weavers down below but it's still relatively a good place, especially if you can find somewhere to get up easy but far away from spiders that live directly underneath it. They're also pretty close to some scanners and it's almost in the middle of the map so it's a good spot to get around to all the other places. I probably will do a top 10 base locations video so look out for that in the future. 
But for now, until they add more creatures attacking your bases, you don't have to maybe panic as much about where you build, just make sure there's no big wolf spiders. A tier 2 hammer has never been more important than it is right now, with the changes made and adding new milk molars, basic consumables that you can break open to increase your character stats, you will need to get hold of a tier 2 hammer as soon as possible. And that's not as easy as you think in early game, you're going to need to kill two of the toughest creatures, or sometimes the most troubling ones in the game, that is the stink bugs to get some stink bug parts, and the bombardier beetle to get their boiling glands. Look out for the individual guides that show you their weaknesses and their strengths, what weapon type damage is best to defeat some of these creatures with in future videos. But right here, we're the close to the hedge, and that's the third and final ingredient you need to make the tier 2 hammer. It's going to be berry leather. You'll find lots of these berries scattered around all underneath the hedge, sometimes on the floor, other times you'll be able to knock them off with an arrow or a rock. Simply when they drop or you find them, you can go ahead and chop them with an axe or a blade like I've got right now, and you'll pick yourself up the berry chunks. Once crafted, you can go ahead and use it to smash open the golden milk molars you'll find scattered around. These will increase your ability to hold more items, like your consumables, your resources or arrows. I would totally go for the max resource stack size first, the other two aren't as important. In multiplayer, these mega milk golden molars have even better uses. Basically, you and your friends can upgrade different ways and you all get the benefit of it. Whereas the simple milk molars, they only affect you. But you will be able to increase things like your active mutations, max stamina, health and reduce your thirst and hunger. In my opinion, you want to get as many active mutations as possible as they can really help you out and you'll quickly get fed up of only having two slots. A major change in the last update where you could hold three, now you can increase up to five but you start out with only two. I've already done some guides on my JPG survival channel showcasing exactly where the location is for every single milk molar in the game. But you really want to get going with these as early as possible as often you'll come across some of these while performing tasks or exploring some of the dungeons and you won't be able to access it until you've got that tier 2 hammer so make it a priority. In my opinion hands down the most important burgle chip, a way to upgrade and unlock brand new recipes for base building, new crafting stations and much more is the one that you find in the Hayes laboratory. When I first introduced it it only unlocked mushroom build pieces basically by the way of the oven. And that has now become one of the most important crafting stations you can have in the game with the most recent update. There will be lots of plenty of guides out there showing you how to get through this haze lab if you haven't already seen mine that's incoming. But basically when you clear it out of all the infected creatures, which there are many, and eventually made your way through to the second chamber with the access, you'll pick up the haze burgle chip. Take these back to burgle and then you can start buying the recipes for things like the oven and much more. But the oven really is one of the most important things you can unlock. It creates the globs, the recipes that you'll find elsewhere, but allow you to upgrade different elemental statuses on your weapons and tools, as well as the meals, which give you extra bonuses and buffs. Again, once you've unlocked the cookbook recipes scattered around. These are brand new systems added with the meals and the upgrading with the globs in the last update. So it's definitely something that older players might not have seen if you haven't played grounded in a while. And of course still the mushroom build pieces, so in my opinion it is absolutely one of the best ones you should unlock first. It won't be easy, you may need some splat burst to break through the first laboratory entrance and you're going to need a gas mask, a weevil mask to actually get through the haze. If you want to explore the haze area in a bit more peace though, you could always plug the weed killer hole with bubblegum and that will stop the haze. But this does cause a catalyst for the infection that you'll find in and around the haze to start spreading across the yard. That's not a bad thing as you need a lot of the fungal pieces that often spring up alongside it to craft some of the better meals and recipes later on in the game. But that's why the haze chip is definitely one of the most important ones you need to unlock first. Combat and Grounded has changed massively, mainly because all of the bugs now have weaknesses and strengths against certain elements or certain weapon types. With the new elemental damage that you can apply to your weapons, from spicy food shards or fresh or mighty or even the salty pieces, it does mean that some creatures will take more damage from some of these, but some are going to be more resistant. On top of that, each of the weapons now has a damage type. Clubs do generic damage, hammers do hammer damage, and then you've got things like one-handed swords which do slash damage. Again, lots of the creatures in the game are more resistant or will take extra damage against some of these types. 
For example, the roly poly here, if you hit him with something that's got spicy on, you're going to do a lot more damage than any other kind of element. Also, if you use generic, which is basically clubs like the ant club or smashing like one of the hammers, you're going to do even more damage against him. What he can stand a lot of is stabbing. So don't try using your spear on this guy. Many of the creatures have secondary weaknesses as well, so even if you can't get enough spicy shards, there are certain elements that will affect bugs as well, and again, some of the creatures have secondary resistances too. I'm sure there's plenty of wiki spots, and I did some testing with live streams as well, showing you all the different elemental damage types that these bugs can take. But yeah, take a point, if you're fighting a creature and it seems harder than it was the day before, have you changed your weapon? The best way to test the different elemental damages at the moment is usually with arrows. There are some creatures that are more resistant against arrows, but you can easily apply different effects on these arrows, like the fresh or the spicy or the salty. You will need an abundance of feathers because you need to create tier 2 arrows, the feathered arrows, to do this, but it's a very good way to test for yourself which of the creatures are more resistant to certain things. So getting hold of feather arrows is definitely something you should work towards in the early game as quickly as possible. You can find some rotten armour pieces and weapons or tools in the game of Grounded. You can pretty much get these early in the game and they'll definitely help you out until you've unlocked the full recipes yourself or got the resources to go ahead and craft them. Like this larvae blade which does poison damage and it's pretty fast. Now these have been in the game a long time, most of them have been added in previous updates over the last year. But with the latest update where you can actually upgrade them, they are now more worthwhile. If you take them to your smithy table, you can go ahead and start upgrading them. It doesn't look like it will do that much more damage, it's only 10%, but basically upgrading it to level 5 will give you 50% extra damage with it. Of course, it's always better to do this on a proper larvae blade rather than the rotten version. That said, in early game, before you maybe unlock some more of the extra weapons that are rotten versions, it can be really good to just to go ahead and upgrade this one, especially with lots of quartzite because it's easy to get hold of compared to some of the other resources. A normal lava blade will have an extra one whole point of damage on the scale of 1 to 10 when you're actually upgrading these. But as you progress and repair them or upgrade them with the quartzite and then start adding things like spicy or salty, you can still make a really big use for these rotten versions. The Lava Blade still retains its poison even when you've put other modifiers on it as well. Here is where you'll find the Lava Blade, just in case you haven't got to that point yet. As I said, it's been in the game a long, long time, but now definitely the rotten weapons have more of a use long term. You'll find it just here, past the log, underneath this orange leaf next to the upturned food carton. There's an ant club that you can find near the bird bath, right over near the hedge area. Hug the wall until you get to the dirt wall. I'm just showing you a top down view so you can see it more. We'll drop down and you'll notice there's a locked door. This takes you up to the hedge laboratory, which you can unlock from the other way round eventually when you climb up there. But you'll know you're in the right location at least. Climb up some of the twigs, Keep hugging the left hand side of the wall and eventually you find a cave entrance. Again, this has been in the game a long, long time. Be warned, there are sometimes wolf spiders or orb weavers around this location. Here it is on the map. It's all the way to the east side where the hedge area is. Inside, you'll find a homage to the forest survival game and you'll find the rotten ant club. You find plenty of ant parts here as well, so it can be useful for gathering and crafting some of the ant armor. But next to the skeleton, you'll find the ant club. At the pond location, pretty much past obviously the big oak tree, and right in the middle, using the lily pads to pretty much get across the pond as much as possible, we're going to find the bee stinger. Now you don't need breathing apparatus in here, unless you really want to be super careful. There will be ways that you can get oxygen. You do have to be careful for the koi fish that swims around, obviously, or it can eat you, but just keep swimming all the way directly down following it. It's pretty dark and murky. You may come across other creatures that are dangerous, but you can use the bubbles that are forming from the broken air pipe. So just make sure you're getting plenty of air as you go down or hover until you've got enough. I'm doing this in creative mode just for quickness, but I promise you, you don't need any any special breathing apparatus to get this one. You can see there is a statue of the T-Rex and this has been here a while but again it's another example of a rotten spear that you can now upgrade and get even more use out of. Especially for me the spear is worth getting this one and upgrading it because you need a lot of resources like bee fuzz to make a proper one and that can be quite challenging getting enough bee fuzz especially if you want to make more of the armour first. So it's definitely worth upgrading the rotten stinger spear rather than crafting a new one if you're short on resources. 
The ant club isn't as hard, you just need to kill some of the soldier ants to get the mandibles and you should have plenty of them ant parts from that cave as well. So I probably would just go ahead and craft a new one rather than use the rotten, but they can still be used for other ways. You can use them as display on side your trophy walls. And just a heads up, there is a slime lantern one that you can get as well, but it's not a weapon, so I don't think it's that important. And you can go ahead and find this recipe pretty easy and early once you start exploring the pond. It's always good to have extra weapons that haven't meant you've had to use lots of resources. So yeah, go ahead and find these rotten ones and go ahead and don't be too scared of upgrading them if you've got the opportunity to. They can be fully upgraded with spicy, fresh, mighty or salty, so I think it's well worth it. Whereas in the past, I wouldn't have really used these beyond a couple of times before they broke. I certainly wouldn't have carried on using it long term once I crafted new ones. But now we have the different elemental types, it's a really good way to put some different element on a different weapon and at least get an extra bonus that way. There are lots of locations and dungeons to explore in Grounded that will give you rewards like burgle chips to get more recipes etc. But the game doesn't really do a great job sometimes of explaining which ones you should go for first. The new zones like the Sandbox and the Black Ant Hill seemingly seem like end game content, but Black Ant Hill you need to do relatively early if you want to start upgrading your weapons with the special globs. These glob recipes you'll find in different areas, with the Black Ant Hill being home to the advanced quartzite smithing glob. And one thing the game doesn't tell you, you need to complete the Black Ant Hill if you want to unlock the special spicy and fresh globs which are hiding inside this laboratory. You need a special key card from defeating the mini boss that's inside the Black Ant Hill. That might all seem a bit overwhelming, it is going to be quite end game content that you'll be taking place and doing, but just a little heads up of what to expect. If you've been hearing or seeing talk about globs and how to access the recipes, well now you know it's going to be quite a while before you get to that stage. So it's not really the best order, but just give you a heads up of what I think is the most important features to get from some of these. In the Haze Laboratory, it obviously is the oven, that's what you want to unlock by getting the Haze Lab chip. In the Hedge Laboratories, it's unlocking the zip lines as well as ladders, that's most important. The pond seemingly seems not as interesting unless you're a base builder and want curved base building pieces, but there are actually two burgle chips that you can get in this area. One is in the sunken outpost, which is pretty much a hidden chest in the water. It's pretty important because it unlocks the splat burst recipe. I've done separate guides on all of these dungeons in the past, so go and check some of them out. But do note the game will kind of direct you to most of these as well. The red anthill one is where you're going to find the rotten bee armor sets and a whole host of upgrades to increase either your damage with like an eye patch or maybe give you better bandages or canteen upgrades. And finally the picnic table that's going to give you the chance to get the milk molar scanner which is really useful for obviously finding more of the upgrade points so you can upgrade your character more. There will be other unlocks that you get with all of these burgle chips but they're the kind of main features that you're going to expect if you go and explore some of these areas. Just bear in mind that all of these unlocks do require a lot of science points, hence why you've got to go to Burgle a lot and make sure you're always doing lots of missions and scanning as much as you can. And there we go, some simple tips and some more advanced kind of directions about what you should be doing in the game. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, check out both of my YouTube channels for more grounded content with Let's Plays, guides, news and more. And I'll see you guys later.